Part 1, Knowing the Tao Here we have a group of 14 thematically linked passages that explore ways to come to a personal understanding of the Tao. It is no easy thing to perceive the imperceptible, when the everyday world demands proof of existence by means of objective evidence. And yet, there is evidence of the Tao all around us, that we do not recognize as such. This blindness points to the limits of rationality. As Shakespeare's Hamlet most eloquently observed on this point, there are more things in heaven and earth Horatio than are dreamt of in your philosophy. We must conclude that there is much more to the world than meets the eye, and which can be rationally understood. We must remember that the rational mind is just one half of our total self. The other half, the imaginative, intuitive side is no less useful. The two sides work best when they work together, as nature intended neither one nor the other dominating. Balanced and integrated. This is the way of the Tao. The fourteen passages of this part makes a strong appeal to the rational mind to bring about a shift in perception so that we see the world through the eyes of intuition, thus bringing the left and right sides of the brain into balance. Passage, The Ineffable Tao, 1. The Tao that can be spoken is not the real Tao. The Tao is ineffable impossible to express. Yet it is the beating heart of every created thing. In the absence of desire, the Tao reveals itself. In the presence of desire, you only see the physical, not the deeper reality. Commentary, the Tao that can be spoken of is not the real Tao. Words can only point to the underlying reality, they are not the reality that lies behind the words. The Tao is an abstract principle that informs the structure of all physical forms. When an acorn germinates, it is the Tao that instructs the seedling how to become a tree that endures for centuries. The Tao is in the DNA of that acorn. Another way to think about this is that the Tao is the laws of nature. No one can see these laws, but we do see how the laws give shape to the world and everything in it. In the absence of desire, the Tao reveals itself to the intuitive mind. Passage, The Nature of the Tao, 4. The Tao is the origin, the cause of all existence. Without limits, it has always existed. Creating and destroying, in equal measure. Blunting the sharp, untangling the knotted, softening the hard. It even created the gods. Commentary, The Tao is analogous to the laws of nature or physics, they exist, but only as abstractions. You can see them working in the physical world. So the Tao cannot be touched directly, but it is observable. An example of this abstraction is the formula pi r squared, the mathematical rule for calculating the area of a circle, where pi equals 22 divided by 7. This abstraction can be applied to any circle, anywhere, anytime, at any scale from an atom up to a spiral galaxy and beyond. It is an absolute truth, as distinct from a relative or culturally based truth. The Tao is the agent by which all forms evolve, the all-pervasive, underlying influence that evolves one form into its own opposite and then back again in an ongoing cycle of opposites. Passage, Alignment with the Subtle, 6. The Tao is the spirit of place, that abides eternally, in the valleys, and o'er the land. Mother Nature, Creator of all things, know the Mother. Abide in her bosom. She is unfailing. Commentary, the wise work every day to bring awareness of the Tao into their consciousness, allowing it to guide their thoughts and actions. They avoid using force, they know it causes counter-reactions, which can be a problem in itself and one that could have been avoided. Understanding the cause and effect nature of life in the physical world, they consciously set up the right causes to produce the desired outcomes. Awareness of these causal links is never far from their mind. Having created the right conditions for what they want, they wait for events to run their course. Others might say you are so lucky, but the wise know they have made their own luck. Passage, using what is not there, 11. A wheel revolves around its hub. The empty center makes it so. A glass exists for its utility. As do windows and doors. Anything whose emptiness makes it useful. The sage creates a sense of lack. 
the Tao must then fulfill. Like air rushing into a vacuum. Commentary, a lack of or absence heightens the perceived need for something. Windows and doors, the space enclosed by the room itself, are only useful for what they do not contain. The empty space is good for ventilation, access and habitation. Learn how to use what is not there to create a desired effect. Passage, the essence, 14. What we cannot see, we call invisible, what we cannot hear, we call inaudible, what we cannot touch, we call intangible. Together we call them inscrutable. The inscrutable is the void of non-being. The inscrutable is the Tao. The many sights, sounds and tastes, of lived experience are not the Tao. Know the Tao by observing the world, let Mother Nature be your teacher, she is the Tao made manifest. Commentary, the essence of the Tao is formless, nameless and intangible, it can only be apprehended by the intuitive mind. The analytic mind can study the laws of nature and physics and know something of the Tao that way. But these are principles once removed from the sublime reality of the Tao. There is much to be gained by integrating the intuitive and analytic parts of your understanding. You perceive the patterns and can predict how a situation might progress by extrapolating on the pattern. You might then take an active or a passive role, often it will be better to employ strategic non-action to allow the situation to unfold naturally, all the while observing intently. Passage, the Eternal Tao, 16. The wise seek to know the Eternal Tao. Begin by calming the mind. Observe without judgment or thought. See how all things arise, exist, and return to the stillness of the source. Thus it has always been, and always shall be. Knowing this truth is a deep insight. Not knowing is most unfortunate. Meditate on this great truth. Your heart will open like a flower. Open heart leads to nobility of action. Nobility of action brings you to the threshold of the divine. Perceive then the Tao. Become one with it. Become eternal. Commentary, the Tao may be perceived by calming the rational mind with its busy thoughts and schemes, and allowing the intuitive mind to calmly observe the world and its unfolding patterns. The Tao gives shape and form to these patterns and may be apprehended by the intuitively minded observer. Not to do this is to remain ignorant, and ignorance is a most unfortunate state of affairs. Passage, you do not have life, you are life, 21. The highest virtue is to know the Tao. To the undisciplined mind, the Tao is elusive. It has no taste. It cannot be seen directly. It makes no sound. To such a mind, the Tao does not exist. Yet it is the cause of all existence. Commentary, all life forms on this planet are expressions of the Tao. It is but one life force that animates all life. They are not separate lives, but instances of the one life made manifest in all their myriad forms. People often speak of my life as though it is something they own. But that is an illusion, we do not own our lives. We are the embodiment of the Tao, a spiritual being having a physical experience. Passage, the origin of all, 25. In a tremendous desire to know itself, the Tao created heaven and earth. This we call the Big Bang. The power behind the Bang, it is beyond naming. It is the great mystery, the source of all creation, and all destruction too. In a constant state of flux, flowing this way and that. Carried away by the flow, brought back by the flow, like driftwood on the tide. Such are the cycles of nature. Know the Mother, honor her. Commentary, the Big Bang was the Tao wanting to experience of the physical. In the billions of years since, and in the billions yet to come, the Tao causes physical forms to come into existence, experiences life and then return to non-existence in cycles of death and rebirth. The poet T.S. Eliot said in his poem Little Gidding, We shall never cease from exploration, and the end of all our exploring, will be to arrive where we started, and know the place for the first time. Passage an evolutionary force, 34. As swimmers in the river of life, we are all immersed in the Tao. As a servant it sustains us. When something is old, it returns to the Tao. 
When something is young, it has emerged from the Tao. Sustaining all, destroying all. It takes no credit for anything. Although it is the driving force of all creation. Commentary, Lao Tzu was the great physicist of his period. But it is so long ago, and his work comes from such a different culture and mindset, the way he expressed himself does not much resemble the language of modern physics. The Tao is characterized as the underlying evolutionary force behind the world as it was, is now, and will be in the future. Our challenge is to see the connectedness of all things, thus bringing the microcosm into alignment with the macrocosm. Passage, Polarity, 42 in the first moment of time, zero became one. Then one became two. Two became four. Four became eight. And so it went. As the universe came to exist. Objects exist for a time. Then return to the Tao. So it goes in endless cycles. Creation and destruction. Live simply, with few possessions. Commentary before the Big Bang, there was no thing, the physical universe did not yet exist. The pre-bang state was zero. In the moment of the bang, the physical universe came into existence. All things became subject to polarity from that moment. In the billions of years since, the universe has been multiplying, perhaps exponentially. The Tao operates through polarity, see it in the law of cause and effect. Actions have equal and opposite reactions. The pendulum swings. In human affairs this manifests as cycles of left and right, war and peace, economic boom and bust, ignorance and enlightenment, love and hate, easy and hard. Millions of pairs without end. Passage, two sides of the same coin, 40. The great Tao moves in cycles, name one thing that does not. Cycles of creation and destruction, at one moment creating, next moment destroying. Neither is more virtuous, two sides of the same coin. Commentary, creation is applauded by the many and destruction is lamented. From the perspective of the Tao, creation and destruction maintain balance in the world. Neither good nor bad, just necessary. After all, unlimited growth would be as catastrophic as unlimited destruction. Passage, Strength in Weakness, 41. When the wise hear of the Tao, they practice it diligently. When the average hears of the Tao, they think about it now and again. When the fool hears of the Tao, they scoff and laugh derisively. That is how we recognize the Tao. Its subtlety contradicts itself. Or so it would seem. Advancing looks like retreat. The easy way seems hard. The greatest virtue seems to have no value. Know that great strength resides in apparent weakness. Commentary, how does one describe the invisible cause of the whole universe as we know it? We call it the Tao, the way, for want of a better name. Consider the metaphor of a majestic river in which all beings swim. The movement of the Tao can be seen at many levels. There is the flow of life from one day to the next the flow of history measured in centuries, and the flow of evolution itself, measured in millions of years. Seek detachment by concentrating on the cause of the flow, not on the surface phenomena. Passage, The Origins of Creation, 51. Who is the mother of all? Nourished by virtue. Shaped by the world. Children grow to maturity. She does not demand respect. Though respect is surely due. Honor the ways of nature. Your blessings will multiply. Guide without interference. Help but expect no praise. This is the way of the Tao. Commentary, Nature is the mother of all, an expression of the Tao on the physical plane. Living in harmony with nature is the key to a harmonious life. Allow others the freedom to be who they are without interference. Contribute to the greater good, but do not expect to be thanked. If you are thanked, that is a bonus. Few people thank Mother Nature, but she will provide any way. That's the nature of the Tao. Passage, The Patterns of Nature, 73. The brave, intemperate man kills or gets killed. 
The brave but temperate man avoids killing. In the eyes of society. Which of these two men is superior? The Tao is temperate. The source of all events. Each in their sequence. The Tao is neither passionate. Or hasty. Yet it fulfills. Accomplishes all. With effortless grace. There is no better model to follow. Commentary. The man of action who serves the tribal mind is praised, despite being contrary to the Tao. It is difficult to see the virtuous since the Tao is always modest. Its actions are measured and mild, yet somehow all things are accomplished by means so subtle that most people do not notice, much less care.